Let's talk about the 400 year prophecy. Um, according to Genesis 15, 13 through 14, it says, and he said unto Abraham, know for surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs and shall serve them and they shall afflict them 400 years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge and afterward shall they come out with great substance. Um, I have one question and I mean, I'm open to correction on this, but when did slavery begin? Because in my research, I find everybody is saying different dates uh, different years and um, that actually brought me to information that and, and it also made me think about something a bit differently um, usually the date that people give um, is when slavery began in America which is 1619 which according to that we're close to um, the end of our captivity. But um, one question I have is, um, how do we know, how do we know we're not closer than we think? Because when I first came into the truth, I was reading the scriptures and how it was saying that this is the beginning of sorrows and uh, earthquakes in diverse places and things I never knew before I came into the truth. But when I started reading it, I was thinking that now is the beginning of sorrows and now is the earthquakes in diverse places. But what I'm realizing is this is just when I've taken note of it. It doesn't mean that this is when it began. And then I started researching back to the year I was born and the earthquakes that were taking place at that time and the historical events that were taking place at that time and the things that were happening that were taking place at that time uh, around the world and um, the wars and the um, uprisings and the, all these things were going on before I was born and before many of us were born so so it would be fair to say even even way back then that was the beginning of sorrows right i mean even even in the 80s and the 70s and the 60s and the 50s and the 40s and the i mean that was the beginning of sorrows am i correct in that i mean right now how do we know that we're not um at the tail end of the sorrows that's one thing i've uh been thinking about because we tend to give everything like a far off projection of I mean a far off projection when the truth of the matter is a lot of the things written in the scripture have already come to pass and um are we not at the end are we not at the end of the book is what I'm saying are we not at the end of the prophecies are we not at the end of the book have we not come to the end are we I mean not everything has passed of course but would, wouldn't it be fair to say that most of it has already taken place I mean isn't it isn't it here to um isn't it here to read and look at and wasn't it written wasn't it written wasn't it written for this time 
is what I'm saying. I mean, wasn't it, doesn't it exist for this time? I mean, I don't know if that makes any sense, but that's what I'm getting at. Uh, I was looking, um, I was just taking the year and subtracting 400 years, which you get 1612 to see what information I could come up with on the internet. And um, it points to the Portuguese. It says here, just on Wikipedia, it says um, in 1611, the Eastern Congo exported 100,000 meters of cloth to Angola. Traders sold much of the cloth to Europeans. Angola exported slaves at a rate of 10,000 people per year in 1612. I'll repeat that Angola exported slaves at a rate of 10,000 per year in 1612. Now that's not the date of 1619 that we normally hear from people. That was the beginning of our captivity in, in America. But according to what I found, um, the Portuguese were at the forefront of the of the slave trade. It says um, here, the Portuguese were the first to engage in the New World slave trade. Of course, we all know there was no New World. It's just the same world it's always been. But when Europeans do something, they always want to call it new. But um, it says the Portuguese were the first to engage in the New World slave trade and others soon followed. So let's talk about that, you know. I just I just wonder sometimes because I just notice people seem to be either stuck in the past or like um projecting into the future when we don't know we know that the past is past, so it's like you can only read scripture so many times before you before you can either I mean you either get it or you don't, you know, like I don't I don't understand why so many people are stuck in the past and just reading the same words over and over and over again, but it's like if you don't get it, if you can't apply it, if you can't understand what it's talking about, if you can't move move with it, then what are you doing? And then the people that project in the future saying that this this will happen probably seven years from now or set we don't even know that, you know, I mean, doesn't doesn't the Bible say that no man knows no man knows um, when the Messiah is going to return nobody knows when when the day of what they call the day of the Lord is going to happen nobody knows the time Would, wouldn't it be fair to say that we we we're, we could it could be tomorrow for all we know, right? I mean, am I way off base here or am I, or is this legitimate? I don't, I don't know. I, I, I contemplate on these things, but um, that's all I wanted to say was, you know, how do we know it's not five minutes from now and how do we know it's not a day from now or next month or a couple of years how do we know it's not next week maybe we have less time to get it right than we think we do or you know then again maybe we have more time but I'm just saying like this projecting so far into the future in this living in the past is kind of like it just it's it's uh 
unrealistic, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. And like I said, I'm not saying that our captivity is going to be over this year, but I'm, I'm also not saying that it isn't going to be over this year. We, how do we know? These are just some of the things that I wonder about. Just how do we know?